This is by far the most epic, most exciting episode of Ruthless ever, right? Even though it appears that we may just be coming to an end of this titillating dramatic saga, the closer we get to the end, the better it gets. And I've got a lot to say about this week's episode, so let's dive right into this recap. Now, at the end of the episode, we saw where George and Lewis pulled the strap on the highest and his sidekick, Daikon, and they were just as shocked as we were, standing there in disbelief, and there was way more humor going on in this seen then a little bit now they're both asking you know daikon in the highest what is this what is this so george decided to give daikon a taste of the end of his rifle and popped him in the face with it like after that y'all i knew he wasn't playing and the highest is calling the soldiers bluff and told him to pull the trigger on george and lewis so george says do you want to die the highest said no now this is very telling because he wanted the camp to see that the highest would not lay down his life for them the way that they would for him. After this, Daikon grabbed the gun of one of the soldiers only to find out that there were no bullets in it. Matter of fact, there were no bullets in either of their weapons. So the only loaded guns on the compound were Lewis and George's, right? Smart move, guys. The smartest move since they've been on the compound. So George took it upon himself to school the congregation on what they were and who they were. He told them that they were all fools for believing in the Raku and that the Raku was a bunch of mumbo jumbo bull skit period. Then they instructed Bridget to make her move, you know, to go ahead and hold Ruth hostage, just like they planned. So it's going real smooth, smoother than I actually expected. And Ruth is standing there playing her part, right? Then George signaled for the driver to pull up in the rolls, everything going according to plan. Now the highest reminded them that they won't get far and that he has men everywhere. And Lewis was like, oh, it's cool. We won't worry about that because you coming with us. And look at the highest walking out like he a whole wimp. <laughs> so then Ruth grabbed Bridget's gun and drew it on Lewis, telling the highest that she loves him. So Lewis just reached out and took the gun from her. And, you know, there was no struggle at all. He was like, give me that. <laughs> they ordered the highest to get into the Rolls Royce and he couldn't leave without giving the camp his left hand of approval to let them know that he was OK. I I'm OK, children. That's what he said. And they pulled out the gates like firecrackers going off on the 4th of July. Meanwhile, back at the sheriff's station, Desiree finally got the warrant, right? And they're ready to move. But the sheriff stopped them dead in their tracks saying that if they were to go up there, that the highest is going to kill everybody. And Agent Kyle, he don't want to hear it. But Desiree thinks that the sheriff may have a point. They went and grabbed Andrew from the cell so that he could verify the sheriff's story. And that he did. So because Slimy as Malcolm is up there, this gives Kyle a second thought on making some moves. Andrew suggested that they wait it out and wait until the highest leave the compound. He gave them all the details about the highest thinking that he was Jim Jones and that the kids were going to drink the Kool-Aid, the landmines, explosives the whole nine but on the other hand if the highest isn't there then the soldiers won't honor any outlandish commands right so Desiree decided to uh, make the call to wait a little bit longer until the highest makes a move to leave and just as she's given the command to stand down Kyle got a message on his phone saying that the um the Rolls Royce is in motion which tells him that the highest is in fact leaving the compound so Desiree wants to confirm that the car is moving and that the highest is indeed in the car so the agent gets on his wrist. <laughs> so the agent gets on his wrist. Y'all, I, I don't know. I often wonder, you know, what are they speaking it to exactly? You know, all the agents, are they chipped or something with the wrist in the wrist? I don't know, because they don't have anything wrapped around their wrist. No watch, no bands, bangles, bracelets, nothing. It's just their wrist, right? <laughs> They can't really identify everybody that's in the car. So Desiree ordered for them to grab their cell phones and um, to communicate with each other because she doesn't want any of their communication to be transmitted on the radios. Maybe, I don't know, this is will be significant later. But at this point, what difference does it really make? So now that freaking Frack done ran off with the highest, Daikon and the crew are on the compound crying. They're all stressed out about what they're supposed to do without their fearless leader. And this is where we see another transfer of power. And we see Daikon being weakened yet again. 
right? His character is just, I don't know, it's just being watered down episode after episode. But Daikon gathered all of his men and he gave them some instruction. And Ruth took charge of the ladies and told them to grab some knives, shovels, guns, the kitchen sink, <laughs> anything that they feel that they could use as a weapon. She secretly told Joan to go and find River, but publicly told her to make sure that the ladies were following her instructions. Then Daikon went over to, what do you think you're doing? And Ruth told him that um, they have to be ready just in case they became the targets of an attack. She told Daikon to, to what? Get on those four wheelers just like I suspected and go and find them. But Daikon said that they didn't have any weapons. And besides, George and Lewis had enough brain cells to disable the four wheelers and, um, and other vehicles. So she told him to have his men cut down a tree so that it will fall in the middle of the road and then cut them off. This way they would have to travel by foot. Now, Daikon was dead set against it, but she convinced Daikon to do it. So, I don't know. They're headed out on foot now. Andrew and the sheriff are having a heart-to-heart -heart because they're now in the cell together again. Now, Kyle had to throw a sheriff back in there because he was talking too much, going against all the plans to go back up to the compound. So, they're reminiscing about all the bad and illegal things that went on. <laughs> and the sheriff thought that he was um, only laying with grown women until Andrew told him otherwise. Then this is when Andrew found out that the highest hair was not real. <laughs> the sheriff said he's actually bald and he gets some girl at the beauty shop to glue it on for him. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I'm going to reserve my comment on that. So Joan sent River to Ruth just like she told him to. And um, he can't believe that George and Lewis took all the money. But you guys may remember that in the last episode, Ruth took some of the money and put it in the trunk of that old newspaper car. So River was to know, you know, since all the money is gone, he should be gone too, right? And we're going to find out later why Ruth wants to be sure that all of her partners in crime are off the compound before she makes her next move. And what she's hiding behind is the fact that she can't leave there without her daughter and Tally's daughter. So she says she's going to stay there and find out where they are. She's telling River to make Joan split the money that she has with him. She's sending River off to find her to make sure that her and Laura hadn't left yet. And this is saying a lot, guys, because there are no guards at the gate. No one to stop them from leaving. But yet they're all still there talking about they can't leave and... <laughs> Actually, this is how it is in real life, guys. So they're so brainwashed into thinking that they can't make it off the compound, you know, in the real world without their leaders. Like, you, you, they'll be lost, right? But anyway, when I interviewed some of the cult members um, that were in the Nuwabian Nation, um, this is some of the behaviors that she witnessed as a child, that they were, um, they have a hard time surviving without their leader. And every time I put up a video, here comes the threats and here comes the video strikes. And, you know, people saying that I never got, you know, permission to put those pictures up there, take it down, yada, yada. And our leader is in it. All of this crap, right? So anyway, I may just put up the conversation that I had with these uh, members or ex-members um, instead of a video, right? And that way we can just listen to them and listen to their experience. I don't know. I interviewed like three of them. And when I started um, this channel and started reviewing Ruthless, um, they had a lot to say. A whole lot. Anyway, so suddenly um, Joan has a heart and she wants to share her million dollars with Ruth and River. Where is Laura? I don't know, Joan said she's leaving, but where is Laura? She asked River to come with her and to put on some street clothes. I mean, they're sitting in the finance trailer having a normal conversation. Like, I would have sprinted out of those gates, right? As soon as that rose hit the corner, I would have been gone. <laughs> And clearly Lacey felt the same way because her and Zane came to leave too. And Ruth told them to follow the yellow brick road <laughs> to the bank. She said, oh no, go ahead and leave. You know, you, you guys can leave me here because I'm going to come after you guys when I find out where my daughter is. Then the women warriors came running ready for Ruth to lead them to victory. She told them that she can't go with them, but she did give them instruction on how to find out where the men were to follow them, right? She also instructed Laura to leave. And I'm surprised that she ain't in the trailer with Joan talking about how they're going to split their money. I don't know. Everybody in the camp getting tipsy. Everybody in the camp getting tipsy. 
<laughs> we see Elder Mother creeping up the gazebo stairs, holding a glass of brown moonshine. Now, she want to know why Ruth didn't go with the women, you know, to lead them. And Ruth said that she don't really have any more fight in her. And Elder Mother commended her for the way that she stood up for the highest. And she said that she was wrong about her. Elder Mother said that she's going to be homeless, sleeping under a bridge without the leadership of the highest. She told Ruth that the baby in her belly can be their new leader. And she wants Ruth to stay there until the baby comes. <laughs> and Ruth convinced her that she's going to stay, right? She told Elder Mother to wait in her trailer and get some rest. You know, wait on the highest to come back. Elder Mother said, no, I don't want to go to sleep. I want to fight. <laughs> Y'all know how it is when we get a little alcohol in our system, especially on that third drink, right? You either want to cry or you want to fight. <laughs> am I right or am I right? So the men are on foot running through the woods when they found one of their men and he stops them, you know, pulls out the strap. Daikon took his gun and then they, they picked up the walk again. I don't know. And then he joined them. So now they're all walking through the woods together. So now River and Joan, they went up uh, to let Ruth know that they were leaving. Joan said that she'd split the money with them, but Ruth doesn't believe her. River told her to keep in touch on their new social media pages. <laughs> at Raku Win 1 and Raku Win 2. Ruth's trying to get them out of there before something else weird happens. And we can tell that she's getting a little bit anxious to get everybody out and settled, right? Then we see Lisa and Zane coming up to say their goodbyes. And actually, you know what? This is Elise Willis's real hair. And I'm so glad that she got a chance to, to show it, you know, because she's got a lot of hair, like lots of it. <laughs> so this appears to be the final goodbye, guys. I don't know, is it? This, um, this time, uh, Lacey, she got to run outside the gates without anyone behind her and without any gunshots going off, right? And the reason Ruth um, used to be so anxious to find those keys, you know, the past four seasons, every season she was looking for some keys or had some keys or, or you know, for some, something with the keys. And why she wanted everyone to go ahead and leave is because she needed to get to that newspaper car and take off with the cash in the back. And in the meantime, the FBI is making their move to stop the highest and the Rolls Royce in their tracks. So they've spotted the car about a mile out, but the car stopped. But why did they stop? I'm thinking that they were stopping to get them out of the car and go ahead and kill the highest, right? And leave them in the bushes somewhere. <laughs> So the highest stepped out of the car with his white gown on and he wanted to know when when and where they had time to come up with all this this gangster plan that they have, right? And George effing with them, right? He was like, Oh, so you didn't know? The raccoon didn't reveal all of this to you. So Bridget started getting second thoughts folding right there, right? And it's all going down, right? Then we listen to the highest make threats saying that they're all going to die um, this tragic death. Have a, They're going to face a tragic ending. So I guess the raccoon is speaking to him now as it seems to be, I don't know, a prophetic word all of a sudden. So Lewis is okay with that because he thinks that it's worth um, coming to an end with 300K to fall back on. And when the highest found out how much money they had, he began to laugh at him, right? Because Ruth played them. But the highest had to break it down to him. He was like, you know, it was almost $3 million. Then Lewis' ears started tingling. Not only that, he was getting pissed off and he wanted some more of the money. And this is where he finna F around and find out, right? That he should have just left well enough alone. And George is in there, you know, he's trying to help him to focus, you know, tell him, look, man, you know, don't let him get in your head. So now Lewis is mad. I mean, he's real mad and he knows that the highest is telling him the truth. So he started beating him in the face with a gun. But George think that the highest is lying. But Lewis is legit hurt because Ruth lied to him and he wants to go back and get more of that money. And also, I'm sure he wants to confront Ruth in the process. Right. So as they're preparing to get in the car, we had some poltergeist activity going on. <laughs> Bridget told the highest not to look at her, right? She found it to be very creepy, you know, and, and unsettling. And as he start um, staring into her eyes, Bridget got struck with a silent bullet and fell to the ground. As he was looking at her, boom, she's down, right? Then we see the FBI and one of their men were taken out too by this um, silent bullet right as he was trying to give them an update. So we've got two men down who've been hit by no one knows who, right? And look at George, the big mouth in the heist, <laughs> hiding behind the Rolls Royce, nervous and scared. But the highest thinks this is all fun, fun. 
<laughs> well, that's it for this episode, guys. And I must say this episode was very, very, very good. There were a few moments that were kind of fast and felt kind of rushed. Um, it's when um, we all they all had on the street clothes, right? And they were leaving. And it was one of those things where if you're going to leave, then just leave abruptly. Do it quick. Do it fast. And if you're going to stay and say your goodbyes, then let's live in that moment. And trust me, I understand why scenes have to be pushed along because Ruth, you know, she had to to get them gone so that she can make her great escape. I get it, right? But I don't know. I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't take time to really dissect it all, but it feels like something was missing somewhere in between the heist itself and then them leaving the gates, outside the gates. There was something missing. I don't know. Maybe it was the buildup from like, they went from, oh my God, you can't take the highest from us. Oh no. To deuces, I'm out. See ya. Right? <laughs> like there was something missing there. I really like Lewis and George being the bad guys. So like, they're quite funny together in that way. They made me laugh. Right? And I can't leave this recap without saying that I see some spinoffs from this show, Ruthless. If there aren't any yet, then there should be because Ruthless is very different, right? From any other drama series. And it's very dark, but rich. And and there are so many more stories that can spin, right? Like from Ruth leaving on a quest to find her daughter in this dusty, rusty newspaper car riding around the country with a, a trunk full of cash, right? To find the daughters. I don't know. Then after somebody gives her a tip about an old man selling hotels, you know, she got to drive through Atlanta to get to it. <laughs> Now that would be classic or we could spend Lewis and George putting the highest in the trunk, you know, um, and going on the way back to the compound, Bridget convinced them that, you know, instead of going back to the compound, let's just go to the bank to get more money because don't they have a little bit more money left in the bank a little bit? I mean, you know, Bridget doesn't want to risk being caught, but the whole time Lewis and George, they're at each other's throats, fussing and cussing the whole time. But I am really glad that the kids aren't on the compound and the way that things are looking, hell, ain't nobody going to be on the compound when they get there. <laughs> the FBI is going to go there. It's going to be a ghost town. And that's if they even get there, because now we have an anonymous sniper who may just turn this whole thing around. Did y'all enjoy the episode? I, don't know, I truly did. It's a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, but let me know how you feel about the episode down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> I know that this video may seem a little rushed and silly, but if I don't do it now, it's not going to get done. All right. So thank you so much for joining me, you guys. If you're a fan of Ruthless like I am, go ahead and sub to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. And I'm going to see you on the next one.